On Monday, 28th April, it was just another normal day in Spain, or so everyone thought. The sun was out, and across peninsula Spain, electricity was flowing just fine. Demand was normal for this time of the year, and everything looked smooth on the grid. Spain's national electricity manager, Red Electric Española, better known as REE, had already done the usual daily energy auction the day before, like always. This auction basically decides who will supply electricity for the next day. REE is technically a private company, but the Spanish government still owns 20% of it. And on their website, they proudly say, we promote the ecological transition in Spain by advancing the deployment of renewables, strengthening interconnections and storage solutions. Keep this term in mind, deployment of renewables. We'll get back on this. So what happened was on 28th April at 12.30 in the afternoon, everything was going smooth. Most of the electricity supplied across Spain was coming from renewable sources, mainly solar power. In fact, solar alone was supplying over half of the country's electricity. Now this wasn't a surprise. All throughout April, solar and wind together were enough to cover the entire demand during the sunny middle hours of the day. Meanwhile, nuclear power plants were running at just half their capacity. Why? Because electricity prices were so low due to renewable sources that it wasn't even profitable nuclear power plants to operate fully. At that moment, electricity prices were actually in the negative, about minus 1 euro per megawatt hour. That means Spain was literally paying others to take its extra power. Because imagine you have so much electricity that you don't know what to do with it. You can't store most of it. And if no one uses it, it could actually mess up the system. So instead of selling electricity, Spain was basically saying to other countries, hey, take this electricity from us and we will even pay you to do it. Spain was literally paying other countries like Portugal, Morocco and France just to take the extra electricity. It's like having too much food at a party and begging your neighbors to take some home, plus handing them a few bucks to say thanks. Now this happens sometimes when there is a lot of solar or wind power being produced, but not enough people using it at that moment. So Spain was exporting electricity to Portugal, Morocco and even France. And to avoid wasting power, Spain was also using the extra energy to pump water into dams. Now this is a clever way to store water for later hydropower generation. But here's the thing, once those dams are full, there is nowhere left to store more water. And then just 3 minutes later, boom, blackout. A complete grid failure, everything went dark. Phones, both landline and mobile stopped working. Confusion was spreading fast. People were hearing rumors that maybe the whole of Europe was affected. Some even thought it might be a cyber attack. But shortly after, battery-powered government radio stations, they reported the truth. They said the blackout was limited to the Iberian Peninsula, basically Spain and Portugal. Now that gave some relief to the public. It was probably not an attack, but a technical failure. When experts looked at the data between 1230 and 1235, a few strange things stood out. There were weird fluctuations in the grid. A sudden surge in wind power generation, which had been low before. France, out of nowhere, stopped importing electricity from Spain. Maybe they sensed a problem. The nuclear plants got an overload signal and were automatically shut down for safety. And the most shocking part? Solar power plummeted from 18,000 megawatt to just 8,000 megawatt in few seconds. Now, the sun did not suddenly disappear, right? So it looks like some kind of automated command switched off a large number of solar facilities, especially in southwest Spain. Normally, the grid should be able to handle such changes. Hydropower usually steps in to balance the supply and demand. But this time, the hydropower was already maxed out. Now we need to understand the bigger problem, that is grid stability. So here's the deal. All the power sources feeding into the grid, that is solar, wind, nuclear, hydro and gas, and all the devices using electricity from light bulbs to fridges, must work in sync at the same frequency, which is exactly 50 Hz. That's how the electricity stays stable. If they fall out of sync, even slightly, it can cause major instability, equipment damage, or even blackouts. Among these different power sources, you will notice sources like nuclear, gas, and hydro are big steady source of power. They help maintain that balance. They act like anchors. But solar and wind, they are great for clean energy, but they don't naturally stabilize the grid. Because solar panels and wind turbines produce DC electricity. But our power grids run on alternating current, that is AC, especially at 50 Hz. So solar and wind need special equipment called inverters to convert their power into 50 Hz AC before sending it to grid. Now here's the tricky part. 
These systems can match the frequency, but they don't have the capability to fight back when the grid suddenly wobbles or changes. They can't react quickly. So on 28th April, Spain had lots of solar and wind power, very little nuclear running, no gas plants ready to jump in, hydropower already at its limit. And when things got shaky, the system couldn't handle the stress. Luckily, within 10 hours, power was almost fully restored, but the damage was done. The real question was, why did thousands of solar plants shut down so suddenly? Was it a software glitch? A programming issue? Nobody had a clear answer. And to make things worse, all zones of the grid were affected at once, even though the system is designed to isolate problems in different areas. It seems the solar plants were not connected properly to respond safely during trouble. And the link between Spain and the rest of Europe's grid, especially France, was too weak to help stabilize things. Now this is where the bigger debate starts, renewables versus stability. Now here's the tricky part, during sunny hours, solar power floods the market, dropping prices so low that nuclear and other stable sources lose money. That discourages them from staying online. So even though renewables are great, they can't actually make the grid less stable if we don't plan properly. But instead of asking how to balance things better, politics got involved. Spain's Prime Minister quickly blamed private operators. He even mocked those saying more nuclear powers could have helped, calling them ignorant. Typical left-wing passive aggression. Spain's current plan is to shut down all nuclear plants by 2035. Now, what is the conclusion? This blackout was a wake-up call. Clean energy is the future, but it needs a strong, stable backbone. That means better planning, proper backups, stronger international grid connections, and above all, Independent experts running the system, not politicians. It's not about choosing solar or nuclear, it's about asking how much solar is too much, when there is nothing else backing it up. The sun might shine bright in Spain, but on 28th April, the whole country saw what happens when the grid can't keep up. Now India is pushing big on renewables. And that's not a bad thing, solar and wind are cleaner, cheaper, and they help reduce our dependence on imported oil and gas. Just last year, India added 34 gigawatts of new electricity. And guess what? 85% of that came from renewables. Out of that, 24 gigawatts was from solar. And then you must have seen street vendors in Bihar and UP are now selling rooftop solar kits. And big companies like Renew Power and Tata Power are attracting crores in investment. Just this week, UAE-backed fund Altera and Brookfield announced a 800 crore investment in Indian solar projects. Now all of this feels like a solar revolution, right? But here's the thing. Making electricity is just one part of the puzzle. Managing it is a whole different story. Right now, India's power grid is like an old scooter carrying modern appliances. It's running but it's not built for what's coming. New homes are getting connected, solar panels are popping up on rooftops, industries are demanding more, and our grid, it is still catching up. India's energy journey is still just beginning. Today, roughly India uses around 1,331 units of electricity per person per year. In comparison, China uses nearly 6,300 units. To meet the dreams of Indian people to run homes, grow industries, and cool the summer heat, we will have to build more power. And most of that will come from solar and wind. But if we don't fix the grid, if we don't track what's getting built, if we don't ensure companies play by the rules, we will keep building capacity, but risk crashing the system. India has done the impossible before, from zero mobile phones to becoming a global IT hub with the cheapest data in the world. Now we stand at the edge of another transformation, clean, green and powerful. But remember, building the future is not just about more power, it's about keeping the lights on. Let's hope the lights don't go out again in Spain. And next time when you see a solar panel on someone's rooftop, smile. The sun is shining on India's future. But then let's make sure that the grid doesn't fry while we chase the light. I hope you found this video informative. I'll see you in the next one.